everybody, my name's Sam. I'm one of the new volunteers with the Wildcat Glade Friend Group. Today I'm here to show you how to use the Elephant Snot Chemical to remove graffiti on our beautiful bluffs. I wanted to take a minute to thank you all for volunteering. We all really appreciate your help. Here's the equipment we'll be using. The five gallon bucket is going to be used to carry all of our equipment to our destination. We can also use it to fill with water to use the pressure washer later. Our elephant snot will come in a one gallon bucket. The lid for this bucket should be kept on at all times to keep all debris out of the chemical. Our small plastic container will be used to distribute the elephant snot to other volunteers. Our basic bristled brush will be used to apply the environmentally safe chemical to the surface. Our bristle brush will be used for agitation after the chemical has been applied. The pressure washer is used to remove the chemical after it has set for a predetermined time. All of our safety equipment will be used by all volunteers to prevent any exposure to skin in case of allergic reactions. And of course, our personal equipment will be used as needed. Next, we'll pack up and head out to the site. First thing you'll want to do is check the area for any hazards. You'll want to make sure you have a flat area to stand, not on a ledge. You'll want to make sure there aren't any branches above you. And this looks like a safe area, so this is where we're going to start. It's important to take before and after pictures of all graffiti removal for multiple purposes. To raise awareness for our cause and also to grant funding for our group. It's important to have your personal protective equipment. Next, be sure to shake the elephant snot and stir the bucket. First, we'll make sure the lid is firmly secured. Then we'll remove the lid to stir. After we stir the elephant snot, you'll go ahead and get the excess off the brush. Lay the brush on top of the lid and pour some of the elephant snot into your smaller plastic container. When applying the elephant snot, be sure to stay only on the painted areas. Start from the top down and go in a dabbing pattern to be sure to get every angle that is affected. You'll also want to apply the elephant snot pretty liberally to every area that has paint. Make sure the entire surface looks glossy to ensure that it's covered. After a few minutes, you start to see the paint diffusing from the rock. After application, we'll pour the excess chemical back into our main container. It's important to bring two or three pairs of rubber gloves with you since they'll be disposed of after application. We're going to wait 30 minutes from the time we first started applying the elephant snot to let it set and dissolve. During that time, we're going to go ahead and assemble our power washer and go collect water. While the elephant snot is water dissolvent, we still want to keep it away from the actual water source while we're cleaning it. So we're going to grab some water from the stream using our five gallon bucket and bring it back to our cleaning area to clean our container and our brush. Start by pouring some water into our cleaning bucket. Use your gloves to get all of the extra solution out of the brush. 
make sure to wash out your area to be sure it's clean. Next, we'll collect water for our power washer. Be sure to fill your five gallon bucket at least three quarters of the way full, and you may have to make multiple trips depending on the size of the area that you're cleaning. Next, we'll go ahead and assemble our power washer. First, we'll assemble the wand. All you have to do is insert the ends like so, apply a little bit of down pressure, and then twist. And then we'll do the same thing for the shorter end of the wand. Insert, a little bit of down pressure, and twist. Next, we'll insert the hose, place it on the end, and release and then make sure the threads are tight where it attaches down here to the actual hose. After assembling, we noticed that the water wasn't pumping correctly through the system to the nozzle, so we disassembled the hose and noticed that this nut was loosened, so we just needed to hand tighten this nut and then replace the hose. After that, be sure that the filter and the weight are at the bottom of the bucket with the remaining hose. And then you'll click this button on the side of the trigger while pulling the trigger at the same time to filter the water through to the nozzle. This particular power washer does have different settings for the nozzle. We recommend either a 15 degree or a zero degree spray. Next, using our plastic brush, we're going to agitate the painted area in our circular motion. Be sure to get every crevice and change the angle of your brush movements as well. You can see after agitation that you can no longer depict what the painting was and the paint has broken down off of the rock formation as well. Final safety check before spraying down any graffiti. We will want to have your safety glasses, a mask for any water or paint particles coming your way, and gloves. You'll also want to remove any valuables from the area and be sure to let everyone else know in the area that you're getting ready to spray down your area. Be sure to stand at a 45 degree angle from the surface, start spraying from the bottom, and work your way towards the top. As you can see on our final product, we got about 90% of the paint removed from the rock surface. Some areas, such as this one, may have had some thicker paint applied. Those are areas where we can touch up later, after the rock face has dried at a later date. Be sure, after you're finished, to take a picture of the final product. After finishing the job, be sure to collect any personal items, pack up equipment for the hike out. Be sure to return all equipment to the Wildcat Glade Friends Group, share your photos with us, and thanks again for volunteering.